by a select few. That's why every time your country is getting better, the people are working hard and money is coming in and they're prospering, suddenly they have a hit on their currency. That's why you can't see it. Real value in your, in your work, the more you work and achieve, the more they oppress your government to take down the value of your currency. So you are never able to have enough money, the financial power to acquire what you wish to have. So only them with the power of the currency will purchase what you could have had. So they keep you in want and penury. So poverty is not natural. Poverty is not, is not synonymous with being in the earth. Poverty is man-made. Like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It is man-made and it can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings. Poverty is man-made. It is not natural. The first question is, who is this man? Well, actually it's more of a system than a man. Today I want to show you how the current system creates poverty. Let's get right into it. The system that creates poverty is called the money system. Like all systems, this system consists of three parts. It's got an input, a process, and an output. The input into the current money system is debt. Debt created by individuals, corporations or governments. This money system is independent of capitalism, communism, fascism or any other ism out there. Also, this system evolved more than it was created. Understand it. If you understand the dynamics of the economies of this world, you will know poverty is man-made. It is made by the government systems of the world. And many, when they come into office, they are frustrated because they try a lot. But then they find there are forces beyond them. But these are forces of men. They are not gods. The world is now divided into rich countries and poor countries. The rich countries at long last admit they have to help the poor ones. They want to help you build factories in your young country, which they say will make your people rich. One man says, first, you have to build the biggest dam in the world. Then another says, we will help you by lending you millions of dollars. All you have to do is promise to pay it back at a huge rate of interest. They built this huge dam, the Volta Dam, and created this entire new lake. The idea was that Ghana would become the world leader of aluminium refinery and bauxite, and it was really a sort of brave new world idea. So they did produce the raw material, but it wasn't very efficient, and the returns from that were abysmal. The belief was very much if we could just give the countries more resources, undertake the right projects, build the biggest dams, uh, then trickle-down economics would work. Uh, the economy would grow and the benefits would go to everybody. In all labor there's profit. So when you're working, it doesn't matter what work you do. Everywhere, whether you are the, 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 the poorest worker, but you're working. It doesn't matter whether you are the, 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 the village, the, the remotest areas. It doesn't matter where. All the work you put in, it's got something. It's got value. Then you're climbing again. You're climbing again. They hit your currency, all right? Oh, but you're working hard again. Value's coming back. You're going up again. And suddenly, because they see you're about to come out, because now your country can pay its external debts. You're able to pay back the debt. They never want you to pay off the debt because that's how they get the money. They don't want you to pay off the debt. Through several private and government-owned institutions, certain 